All right. On section 1.5, we're talking about transformations of the graphs of functions or transformations of functions. And the first type of transformation we're going to talk about is just translations or simply shifts, moving the graph around. Now with all of our transformations, there's going to be horizontal transformations and vertical transformations. So in this case, dealing with translations, horizontal shifts are going to be with the x value. We try to keep consistent with the book's notation here. They're using C for horizontal shifts. And I'm assuming here that C is positive. So the effect of adding something to X or subtracting something to X is a horizontal shift. And that's one of the themes that it's going to be a horizontal transformation when the transformation is close to x, as close to x as it can get. And it'll be a vertical transformation when it's far away from x. So for example, vertical shifts look like this, f of x plus d or f of x minus d. Again, assuming this is positive. So the horizontal transformations are going to be close to x. The vertical transformations are going to be outside, away from x. Another theme that's going to arise in all these transformations is that horizontal transformations are always backwards. You'd think adding c would move everything to the right by C. But horizontal transformations are backwards. This is just moving the graph left by C units. Whereas subtracting, you'd think subtraction would move left, but horizontal transformations are backwards. Subtracting moves to the right. Now vertical, vertical transformations do exactly what you think they will do. Adding moves the graph up and subtracting moves the graph down. That's the basic idea here. So if we look at a few examples of this, if we look at problem four of section 1.5 on page 121, The original function that we're looking at here is 1 over x. We're supposed to describe how do we transform this basic function into the following functions, where g of x is 1 over x plus 2 and h of x is 1 over x minus 3. Well, if you look here, the plus 2 and minus 3 
are very close to the x. In fact, they're as close as they could possibly be to the x. So these are going to be horizontal transformations. In fact, if instead of x, you put x plus 2 on the right hand side here, you'd get g. So g is just f of x plus 2. And since it's horizontal, it's going to be the exact opposite of what we think. It's not going to move right to this, the graph of g is going to be the graph of f, but moved to the left two units. Whereas h here, h here is just f of x minus 3. So again, the minus 3 is as close to the x as it can possibly get, and it fits in this form. We can write h of x as f of x minus 3. So this is a horizontal transformation, and it's not to the left as we would think, but instead the graph of h is the graph of f, but moved to the right three units. That's the answer for part A. This is the answer for part B. And if we look at problem two on that same page, it's a very similar problem they give us saying that f of x is defined to be the absolute value of x. g of x is defined to be the absolute value of x plus 1. And h of x is defined to be the absolute value of x minus 2. Now in this case, I could move the plus 1 closer if I moved it inside these vertical bars. So the plus 1, and same thing with the minus 2, aren't as close to the x as they could be. So these are going to be vertical transformations. And we could write these as f of x. f of x is just another name for absolute value of x plus 1. And similarly, with h of x, instead of absolute value, we write the original function name, f of x, and then the rest of it stays the same. So this is a clear example of moving a graph up one unit, Whereas here, subtracting, vertical does exactly what you think. Adding moves up, subtracting moves down. Vertical is very nice. It's the horizontal transformations that you need to watch out for. And that's the idea of translating graphs, just shifting them around.